What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Chatting with the Cholo, where you guys will continue to be the audience and I'll continue to be your heavily tattooed host, the Cholo. How's everybody doing? Hope you guys are all well. Tonight, we're going to be jumping back in time again with Chris Chan. Thank you guys again for taking the time to watch this video with me. We've got, I think we said 78 more episodes to go. We'll tear into it. Anyways, I'll shut the fuck up. We'll get to the video and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, let's throw a big shout out to Gino Samuel 2.1. Go check out his channel. Give him a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It'll it, His channel will always be linked in my Chris Chan videos. He put together an 85 part series on Chris Chan and it, it really truly is an impressive piece of work. So today is Chris Chan. A Comprehensive History Part 8. I'll shut the fuck up and we will get started. <clears throat> what made him this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. Ohio is to Miyamoto-san. I, I have decided to uh, do this video standing up as I felt it more appropriate so that I could also allow myself to bow for your presence and such. On January 17th, 2009, Chris filmed a video to convince Shigeru Miyamoto that he was the true Christian Weston Chandler. <coughs> I covered my uh, number on there. If you look at the one point view, you can see the uh, Virginia and the state numbers on there. And also, Mr. Miyamoto, my Wii Remote in Nunchuck. We would like to play, to quote the commercial in an honorable way, if I may. So, Mr. Miyamoto, please uh, do not uh, quote me as uh, a troll because I am the real deal. Believe me. And hopefully I will be able to uh, meet with you in Redmond as soon as possible. I'll be talking to my church congregation tomorrow. And uh, I wish you a pleasant day, Miyamoto-san. Sayonara for now. Later in a Skype chat, Julie convinced Christian to make a video reasserting his heterosexuality. Just, just to remind, just let everybody in my fan base and on the internet know, I'm still, I am straight. I am straight. And no troll, no slanderous troll is gonna alter me in such way. I'm straight. Straight? Believe me. I have a subscription to Playboy. And look at my eyes, my yeah. face. I can't be more serious than how I am right now. Those damn slanderous trolls. Damn them all to hell. Oh my god, he's trying to be intimidating. I've never seen a face less intimidating in my entire life. He looks like an R-worded goldfish. I guess that would be the proper way to say R-E-T-A-R-T-E-D. I don't know if I want to actually say that out loud. I don't want anybody to think I'm an asshole because I... You know what, Chris looks like a retarded goldfish. We'll just, we'll just put it like that. And another thing, you slanderous trolls. You can kiss my foot. And you know what else else? He stomps oh. on an unused vibrator that he got as a free gift with a purchase from AdamEve.com. And don't you forget it. How about the rest of y'all, the true good citizens? Peace and have a good day. On that same day, Clyde Cash hacked into Chris's AOL account and sent an email to Cash's other persona, Miyamoto, posing as Christian. I just wanted to let you know that I, Christian Weston Chandler, have come out of the closet. I am gay. I've been ashamed to admit it for so long, but I don't think I need to hide it from y'all. I hope you understand and support me for the path I've chosen in life. And if anyone is offended by what I've decided, please forgive me. I am sorry, but I cannot live a lie any longer. I have never been straight. I am gay and always have been. Yours truly, Christian Weston Chandler. It was possibly around this time that a select few trolls, including Clyde Cash, Coxdev, and Blue Spike, among others, formed an alliance called the Private Villa of Corrupted Citizens. 
named after the villainous organization of the Sonichu comics. They would secretly discuss future trolling schemes and organize and orchestrate interactions with Christian in order to effectively manipulate him into providing whatever kind of content they were seeking. They desired to be the sole manipulators of Chris and eventually resisted acceptance of new members, at most having no more than 50 members at any one time. On January 19th, Chris let Julie know that he received a death threat against his family over the phone, attributing it to Clyde Cash. In response, he made a video begging that Clyde move on from tormenting him. Clyde, I'm sorry your brother died. That doesn't mean you have to go picking on me for the cause of his death because I did not do it. I did not do it personally to him, and I did not mean to do it. I'm just an I'm just an innocent bystander in all this. You don't have to do anything me. I mean, would Ryan want you to go doing anything stupid as torturing other people or even go as far as killing them? You don't have to do this. Just live on your life and move on. You'll find yourself a girlfriend. And she'll make you about she'll make you happier than possibly how well Ryan could have done it. I mean, right. I feel for you, man. I mean, my dog died. I was sad. I cried for weeks. But yet, I got over it. I saw my I saw Patty in my dreams, and she reassured me that things were that she was okay, and that God is taking good care of her. And with that, I'm I was able to move on, live my life a little bit more happier and more luckily. And over. Two years now since she died. You'll find a lot of other things that make you about as or greater than happy as you were with uh, Ryan around. You what? Just take it one day at a time, one moment at a time. You'll get over it. Peace, man. He also wrote another email to Miyamoto, oh, telling him that the previous email was penned by an imposter and reasserted that he was actually a straight man. He let Miyamoto know that he had sent him a letter containing original Sonichu and Roshu drawings and a photocopy of his driver's license, enclosed in an envelope personalized with a hand-drawn Sonichu on it. The following day, he completed his PowerPoint presentation about the history of Sonichu with the intention of sending it to Nintendo. On January 20th, Christian took part in an IRC chat which included Clyde Cash and someone who called himself Billy Mays, playing the part of the well-known infomercial salesperson replicating the high volume of his voice by typing his messages in all caps. Chris tried to convince Clyde to stop threatening him by likening Cash's loss with the death of his dog, Patty. Clyde claimed that he raped Sarah McKenzie. Chris didn't respond. While his detractors continued to call him lazy and deceitful, he said that he was bravely standing up to them like a warrior. Clyde and Mays then proceeded to call him gay, citing the photo of him in his mother's underwear as proof. Chris defended himself by admitting that he owned numerous pairs of dirty crapped briefs as a result of poop sliding out of him without his knowledge. He further defended his sexuality by proclaiming that he loved vaginas and hated dicks. He continued to argue about his alleged homosexuality for more than 10 minutes, with Billy Mays oh interjecting God. to address the point. <laughs> you know, not for nothing, but I know I'm straight. If somebody calls me gay, I don't feel a need to rant about it for 10 minutes. Chris then discussed the legality of his comic, saying that Sonichu was legal on the grounds of it being a parody. Sarah May joined the chat in Christian's defense. Shortly after, Ignatius J. Riley, the founder of Gay Force Sonichu, arrived as well. He mentioned a paper he wrote featuring Sonichu called Heterosexual Homoeroticism in Internet Subcultures, a case study, which would allegedly be published in a future issue of the Journal of Gay and Lesbian Subculture Studies. He also revealed via a fabricated image that the fan club had made a Sonichu float for San Francisco's Gay Pride Parade. Riley highlighted the supposed homosexual nuances featured in the comics, such as the significance of rainbow imagery, male-looking female characters, and his flamboyant fashion sense. He then revealed Christian's personals page on the Hook Cafe website. After the non-stop berating, Chris unleashed his frustrations. Get it through your thick skulls as you f***ing possibly can. I am f***ing straight for women, their vaginas, their breasts, and most importantly, I am straight for their individual sweetness. The following day, 
Chris and Clyde met again over IRC. Early in the chat, Panda herself appeared and confessed to Chris that Clyde Cash had raped her, taking her virginity. Christian hardly acknowledged it, allowing Sarah and Clyde to discuss it amongst themselves. She revealed that she got pregnant. Despite Cash admitting that he was willing to move in with her to support the baby, Christian said that he still loved her and would care for the child as if it were his own. He stated that he wouldn't object if Sarah chose to be with Clyde instead of him. Panda then told him that she will hand the child over to Cash if Sonichu became successful worldwide and would move in with Chris and have lots of sex with him. If this condition wasn't met, she would live with Clyde instead. On the same day, Christian addressed the recent hacks of his websites. In addition to my previous uh, denouncing of the Sonichu.net, I have also denounced Sonichu.info since that got hacked into on around the 18th of January. So as of the 18th, I've denounced Sonichu.info. But I promise every one of you, my loyal, true Sonichu fans, especially the uh, Sonichu girls, and while I respect <coughs> men and people, I hate the homos. I actually do have Jesus a past Christ. story. As I have realized from repressed memories back from the Green County days. But I will not go further than that because y'all would have a field day. I'm straight and nothing is going to change that. Later that day, he informed Miyamoto that he will arrive in Redmond, Washington soon. He also attached his Sonichu PowerPoint presentation. The next day, Chris apparently left for Nintendo of America headquarters in Redmond to meet with Shigeru Miyamoto. There was no online activity from him until January 26th. January 26th, 2009. I just got back. I set myself to Redmond. It was a good trip. Go all the way there and all the way back. Boy, my arms are tired. That's no joke. <laughs> anyway, the uh, Video, science in the video game project. It's all off the ground and it's all progressing. I'm not at liberty to discuss it any further beyond that, as I have made the agreement with Mr. Bayaboto upon such. Anyway, that's it for now, and uh, I will try to answer as many emails as possible at my earliest convenience within my busy hours. Thank you very much for your patience. Have a good day. He quickly took the video offline, claiming he was ordered to do so by Nintendo. After being confronted by Miyamoto via email, Christian confessed that he never went to the supposed meeting. I am not lazy, Mr. Miyamoto, and I am terribly sorry for angering you. I meant no harm. Please, Mr. Miyamoto, do not cancel everything. I come from a mother and father who were of great business practices, and yet I lack a bunch of experiences that they had that I require. I have given greatest efforts to perform to your wishes. I have given greatest efforts to raise the money for the money locally, but I could not find local emotional and financial support, even from my own mother and father, my church's congregation, and my attorney. I have worked very hard on that PowerPoint presentation, and worked very hard when I drew up the CAD plans for Quickville Shopping Mall. I did a hefty amount of thinking in that video and sending all that to Redmond, yet to see all that work fall into discarded abyss. I've worked my mind, my body, and my soul very hard in all my works, and I'm not lazy. Please, Mr. Miyamoto, grant me another chance to make up for my past mistakes from my hard work. I promise you that I, Christian Weston Chandler, can and will do a lot better than before and be more capable of meeting with you in the near mm -hmm. future. In response to this, Clyde Cash assumed the identity of the then president of Nintendo of America, Reggie fils to scold Chris. I'm known to be a loudmouth. I don't take crap from anyone. So if you are easily offended, I suggest you stop reading. But don't worry, I'll try to go easy on you. Keyword being try here. But with that out of the way, I just want to say something to you personally. May I kindly ask, what the hell is wrong with you? Are you for real or what? I was there for everything. I saw Miyamoto waiting for up to two days in the bitter cold for you to show up, and you stood him up. I was even there trying to arrange everything for you, even setting up someone to escort you to our building complete with bodyguards and full security, because I knew you were concerned about safety. And for what? So you could just not show up? I mean, I don't even know what to think. It's just completely unbelievable. Think about what happened if you did go, and you had to ask mommy and daddy for an okay on everything. Imagine what a complete disaster that would be. 
I mean, listen, simply put, you are not fit to do business with us, as you are not even in a position where you can make your own decisions, which is vital to survive in the workplace, and even life in general. After a few more exchanges, Reggie admitted that Nintendo had lost interest in Sonichu. We're not interested in your project. I've seen the PowerPoint. Apart from the fact that you are unable to manage for yourself, the PowerPoint really was the final straw. It was filled with gratuitous and shameless drawings with every other frame showing some form of partial nudity or characters making out with each other. This decision is final. We are not going to do business with you, and that is all. Sort out your own life. We cannot help you. Cushion disagreed with his assessment of the PowerPoint presentation. There was positively no nudity at all in the PowerPoint presentation. And what the heck is wrong with true love and kissing? Are you a virgin yourself? Have you had a bunch of bad dates? Or are you so close-minded and rednecked? True love is a truly sacred bond between woman and man, and when they are together, they get attracted to each other very much to kiss and later make love. God and Jesus wants us all to experience and share true straight love. There is nothing objectionable from that. I am a man who stands for true love and honesty in comics and in real life, although I am still a frustrated virgin with autism on the side. At least I am making a positive difference in keeping true love between only woman and man in my actions. On a side note, I despise all homosexual males, period. Also, I bet you probably smoke and drink, don't you? I speak against those as well, since they are tools to speed you to death with cancer, liver problems, bar fights, and automobile accidents. Give up the habits. They are beyond gross and disgusting. Sigh. On January 30th, Chris released a video addressing the events of the past few days. I respectfully, de I respectfully detract the uh, previous statement I made, where I said the bit where the wheels were rolling with the Nintendo of America, because the president of the company, Reggie Phil Imes, has uh, set as a can has plainly canceled the project, and also, also. I do, uh, so I'm respectfully doing this retraction, but also I'm putting in my own two cents because Reggie has just made a step too far. Mr. Aime has lost my respect because he objects to love. I mean, it's between straight lovers. Avery, I mean, what? homo males are objectionable. Very objectionable. I hate them. But when it's between straight, it's between a man, a man and a female, it's true love and honesty. So, Mister Imes, you've lost my respect. Good. No and you have that, crossed Chris. the line. And if you want to see me at court, I'll see you at Charlottesville Court. And I'm doing this parody of Sarah Moon in response to the uh, lost Sarah Moon title that would have been released to Japan for Nintendo Wii. Go ahead. Come on. I'll see you. I'll see. You, Reggie, and Mr. Miyamoto, I'll see you both in court, Charlottesville, Virginia court. I have a num I have a slaw, a great, a grand number of family and friends locally that will still will defend me in my character. So let's see what you got. Peace. He swiftly removed this video as well, issuing another a day later in its place. I respectfully retract the uh, previous video I uploaded, and I wish to apologize humbly for it. I want uh, Mr. Miyamoto, at least, to uh, be able to, you know, make himself present himself personally, or at least to uh, send uh, something in the snail mail to prove that I have been talking to the real man himself to my family because you know my mommy and daddy well they still well they love me and care about me very much uh yeah, he just called barb and bob mommy and daddy bro you're like in your mid-20s at this point that's fucking weird and you just uh get concerned when i <clears throat> talk to other people on the internet and they're not sure about uh, who they are Please, do not cancel the project totally. I mean, like, you know, uncancel it and just, you know, just shelve it. Because as you can tell from uh, my energy I have, I have given, I am very ambitious about the project. And honestly, I am... I, 
because as you can tell from、uh, my energy I have, I have given, I am very ambitious about the project, and honestly, I am. Why the heavy I'm breathing? A, I'm a good guy, and you know, I mean, y'all have the money. Y'all should be able to,、uh, you know, find some free time in your schedules. You know, come and visit some of your actual par- partial or full business associates in their homes. I mean, I showed y'all respect, but then、uh, all this happened. So hopefully,、uh, we just put all this behind us and start fresh on a good note. All right. The last person that deserve that deserves to put all this shit behind him, start fresh on a good note, is, is you. Fuck you, Chris. The way you behave, even I mean I know what's happening here, but even in these hypotheticals, you act like an asshole, Chris. You're fuck you, dude. Nobody wants nobody wants anything to do with you, you piece of shit. Later that day. Chris took part in his first chat with supposed admirers on Mumble, a voice chat application designed to be used by gamers. In the fan chat, he talked about Transformers games and gaming systems. I used to hate both the PlayStation and the Xbox, but then I ended up getting the PlayStation One at a rummage sale, and then I just kind of like you know I test played it, and then I pretty much felt, then I decided not to try it in. <laughs> Excuse me a second. Alright.、Uh, I'm actually wondering if I should stay online or go play Animal Crossing. That's、uh, the conversation. Eventually moves on to other topics. Women's women's bodies look. Let me try this again. Women's bodies look a bit. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. They are. Yes. They're more beautiful. They're more beautiful. They're like. They're they're, they're truly like. Works of art in their own way, just like、uh, you know, just like you know, the statues that、uh, were built in past times.、Mm-hmm. Uh, um. Chris admits to somewhat approve of sex between sisters. I mean, it's not like we're gonna、yeah. reproduce, you know. So there's no messed up stuff there. I don't know. I guess between sisters. But like you know, it's possibly okay. But I'm not no, saying for certain. All right, so anyway, I'm going to get some needs. So I'll come back later. Yeah, I'll、okay. take care. You too. Good night. Bye now. Bye. Wow. I got most of that recorded. I got it all recorded from when I returned back. It was possibly、That's、around、disgusting. this time that Chris sent Cassie Rosechew twenty-three locks of his own hair, enclosed in a bag, with each lock accompanied by an official seal of approval, intended to be shared amongst members of the Sonichu Girls. <coughs> He also attached a letter. I felt I should send you the sample of my hair locks I was able to divide for you and your friends, including Sarah May. Enclosed in are twenty-three locks of my hair. I felt bad for not making two hundred cards in the time. I've been through a bunch of bad times and some good. I trust that you can understand fully, and I deeply thank you for that. When she finally received the package, she stated that the hair was greasy and had an odd smell. On February fourth, Christian held his second mumble chat. This time, he was joined by Clyde. Or Hyman. <laughs> well, I know it's a terrible mistake I made, but I planned to make it up to her. I didn't marry them. I'm, I'm doing the things that I should do. Oh, and another thing, if she is really over there with you now, then I, then put her on the mic, please. She's very busy, okay? She's very busy. During the lengthy chat, Chris answers many questions from the people involved. You've been in an automobile automobile accident. I mean, were you drunk? No, I was distracted. But by what? I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to be distracted. You gotta be focused on driving. I was doing、now. math in my head. Hey, wait, math in your. My mind got distracted by being its own calculator. Are you some kind of savant? Come on. What? They also confront him about his cat degree and why he has failed to use it to get a job. Towards the end, Chris is interrupted by Barbara. Hi, mom. Hi, you want a couple hot dogs? Uh, no thanks. 
I'm just answering a few questions, Mother. You don't have to answer. Nobody's paying you to do that. It ain't none of their business, no way. I said, I've never been asked questions like that by employers or anybody. Don't tell people what you think. Yep. Chris, what's, that? what's happening? Well, obviously, my mother is offering her input. Tell her you're just talking to I don't need no back talk with somebody else on the other end of the phone. I hear you, Mom. These idiots who ain't had no rings and they don't, they don't have any idea what life is playing about. Tell me where, tell me where you've been. Your mother has a beautiful singing voice, Chris. And mom, you know what? Something else. They like your singing. I don't sing. You just did. It's my life. It's my life. Yeah. Cause you couldn't hear me. They heard you singing just now. I can't sing. You just did. I told you. Did you write checks for all those bills and pay off everything? I was going to keep that up. Yeah. Yes, mother, I did. You're not telling me a story. I'm not telling you a story. Do you hear the way she's talking to him? It sounds like she's talking to a child. I need to reread that. Oh, uh, let's see right here. Sing it. Just now. I can't sing. You just did. I told you. Did you write checks? Did you write checks for all those bills and pack everything I warned you about? All those bills and pack everything I warned you about? Yeah. Yes, mother, I did. Yes, mother, I did. Do you, you guys hear that? It sounds like a, a mother communicating with like a 10 year old or a 12 year old little boy that like he's learning to pay bills or learning how to use dad's credit card or something for the first time. That's what this sounds like. And he's like in his 20, she asked him, are you not telling me a story? Are you, are you like, you're not telling me a story? I'm not telling you a story. Okay. Cause you have to be honest with me. Cause see, you're certain. I'm being, I'm being honest. Behind the scenes. The way she has to tell him, you need to be honest with me. Like, it's so weird. So strange that he's, like, like I said, in his 20s or something at this point. It's weird the way he gets spoken to. I guess, though, they have to because mentally he is a child. Chris and Julie continued to chat on Skype, with Christian admitting that it had been about a week or two since he last heard directly from Sarah. Julie convinced him to join another mumble chat the following day. Oh, it's you. Yes, of course. Well, I have unfortunate news about Mulvaney. It appears to have been destroyed. I, I know that sounds strange, but I don't know what happened. I'm mm. very worried. Hang on, I'll, uh, I'm, I'll Google. Mulvania, see if I can No, find it's alright. I'm pretty sure I know what happened. Oh, uh, tell me in your own words, uh, what do you think happened? I don't know. It's just, I think the dictator of Mulvania, I think he was assassinated. Clyde unexpectedly makes an appearance. And who cares? Clyde? What are you yeah. doing here? I just wanted to stop by and say hi, Julie. Get out. That's, that's the one thing. Why sense. haven't you killed me yet? Why haven't you killed me yet? You must be on your drugs again, you jerk. Not this time. Not this time. I was being too nice last time, obviously. That, that was me on drugs. I was too nice when I was on drugs. Chris, I don't think he's gonna leave. I'm scared. What if he tells all the other jerks what we've been saying? What if he knows? He knows nothing. He's been mostly out of this conversation. I know everything, ever. Oh, there you go, he got kicked out. So anyway, yes, I do see someone outside of my house, I don't know who it is. I'm worried. It's best not to try not to think about it. Someone's pounding on my door. I'm going to go lock it, I'm, I'm worried, Chris. I'm going to go lock it. Okay, yeah. Oh, it was... I looked outside, Chris. Uh -huh. It turns out it was a salesman. <laughs> oh, that's I, I acted so silly. Yeah, but it's okay. It's only it's only human. You're only human. 
They talk about cars, Sonic Two characters, and video games. When I do go to Ruckusville, Virginia, I would love to play Guitar Hero with you and Burnout and all the games. I'd like that too. Play with you. <laughs> you know, Guitar Hero Encore rocked the eighties. The、uh, Encore number was、uh, "Play with Me." Oh, cool! That's quite the coincidence. So, come play. Come play. <laughs> I will. You know. There may be other things, other fun things. Chris continues to elaborate on their first time together. Oh,、uh, first we make out. Hmm. Throughout that day, I, I will have、uh, eaten plenty of strawberries. I love strawberries. I'm masturbating right now to the spot. <laughs> so please continue. I'd let you pull my pants down and let you warm me up a bit. You wouldn't mind、uh, giving me a blowjob. At the, start, at the start, there,、mind. you might get, you know, some of the premature stuff, but、uh, you know, at least that's out of the way. <laughs> yeah, we would continue after that, right? Yeah, I still got a lot more tiger in my tank. <sighs> Me too. Chris talks about them engaging in sexual acts some more, and admits that because he would have been eating strawberries beforehand, upon ejaculating, his semen would taste like strawberries. Oh,、mm, there you go. <laughs> in the mouth. You're enjoying that.、Mm. Clyde appears again and threatens to fly over to visit Julie and play Russian roulette with her. Really, are psychopaths? Why so serious? You need to be put in an institution. <laughs> More like you need to be put in an institution. <laughs> I mean,、no. you're obviously delusional. You really believe that you you can smite me and I don't know. You can stop me with your words. You really think that? I don't just think that, but I am confident. Chris and Clyde continue to argue with each other until Clyde explodes and says that high-functioning autism is not a recognized diagnosis and that only Asperger's syndrome exists in its place. What can you do that makes money? You are a parasite on America to America. You just leech off the government, getting money. They throw you money just because you're autistic, which you are not. People with actual jobs support your lazy ass. I am capable of standing up and supporting myself, and I am ready to. But I like to feel like you're twenty-six have... years old. What do you mean you're not ready? I like to feel like I have a woman by my side to help me make sound decisions at the right time. Spoiler alert: You're never going to get a woman.、Like、yes,、it. you will. Me. Be quiet. You're I, a jerk. Really, no, I'm trying to help him. You know my cousin Vivian. She's been trying to help this kid. And guess what? Nothing has worked. Get us actual help. And what have you done, Chris? What have you done? Clyde Cash tells Chris that he won't harm Julie if he makes a video confessing that he is gay. Christian conceded and made the following video, apparently saying the word "gay" for the first time in his life. You know the word. Gay tends to be thrown、Gay. around a lot, especially when、uh, one's words is、uh, heavily understood one way or understood another way. It can mean so much. In front of the camera, he left a series of clues that his true fans would spot and come to the conclusion that he was acting under duress. Firstly. He placed a Sailor Moon poster in the background, which also featured the prepubescent character Chibiusa. Secondly, he is seen holding onto a transformer, Optimus Prime to be precise, due to its symbolic representation of masculinity, as Christian had explained in his 25th birthday video. Finally, he is not wearing his medallion, meaning that he is being dishonest. What's more, he acts as if he is in distress every time he says the word "gay."、Uh, simply put. And I am willing to say this, in sound mind and body, I am a gaybian. Yep, you heard me. I am a gaybian, a male lesbian. Thank you. After the video was uploaded, Chris held a short mumble chat with Clyde and Julie. Hey, Chris, what is a gay? Oh my God, Chris, that was so fucking stupid. A gaybian, a gay lesbian. Sure.
Indian? I have never heard this word in my life. It's like a lesbian, except it's, a, it's like guy and guy. But basically it means gay. Now it means you're straight. Okay, I'll accept that I made an inferior product. I'll improve it. I'll, I'll improve it if you'll, if you'll, if uh, it will help, if you will, if you will, if you'll give me a bit, if you'll, Spit it out. if you'll leave Julia, if you'll leave Julia, if you'll leave her alone. Oh my God! How many times are you gonna say it? For fuck's sake! Find your words, there, dipshit. Man, you sure look stutter. That's all right. Well, I'm moving around, but I'm gonna send you some chocolates. Okay, is that okay? Uh, Joy, is that okay with you if uh, he sends you chocolates? Um, okay. And I'll send you some flowers. Okay. Why? Miss Amelia, come on, you are a dance woman. Shortly after. Chris made another video in which he finally admits to being gay. You know, the uh, word gay in terms like coming out of the closet uh, gets thrown around a lot. Anyway, so to get to the point, fine. I'm good. I'm gay. I'm gay. I said it. Yep. I'm gay. So, did I really come out of the closet there? It just depends on y'all, how y'all understand it. Peace. As the video was being uploaded, Chris rejoined the mumble chat. He admits to Clyde that he probably spent around $10,000 over the past 9 years on video games, and Clyde states Chris is unable to save money in the long run. When asked, Chris couldn't name 5 typical household bills. Both Clyde and Chris say that they haven't heard from Sarah in a long time, and Clyde fears she might be dead. When talking about personal preferences for a girlfriend, Clyde accuses Chris of being racist. I didn't realize that this right here was... Now I see that it looks like lips. If you guys saw me on camera leaning forward and like scoping something out, it was this because it did not look like a set of mouth lips for a second. It's not what I saw there. I would care about a black woman as a friend, but you know, I would not uh, want beyond just friendship. Of course not. Chris. I still have a lot to learn. That's about looks, not about personality. You're still being racist. Hey, don't you blame me for no fool, man. What? What was that? You figure it out. I, I'm. What? I have no comment. On, what was that? Oh, that just be an imitation of a black person or somebody from Jamaica. Oh my you god! You know those are different. Oh Christ Almighty! Oh my God, Chris, are you fucking kidding me? Oh my God, dude! He thinks all black people are the fucking same. Oh my god, the ignorance. Mind-blowing how fucking ignorant and stupid he is. Oh my god, I cannot stand that hillbilly, backwoods, ignorant fucking bullshit. Because it tells me that that shit was ingrained in him from the time he was just a wee little gender-questioning little fuck. That shit came from Bob and Barb, and that tells me that all they see is people of color, they're just ends. Oh, you pieces of shit. I cannot stand racism. That's one thing that I do not want on this channel. It's racism. So if that's how you're rocking and rolling, please bounce. So we don't want anything like that around here. You want to hate people? That's fine. But hate them for their actions. Hate them for who they are. Don't hate them because of something they can't help, like their skin color or their gender. That's that's ignorant. I hate Chris because he's a piece of shit. Anyways, I'll shut up. <laughs> so you are racist. My God. Hey, well, if it, be, if it fits Archie Bunker's shoes, then let it be. But I am not totally racist, man. I am what? not racist. <laughs> what was that? What was that? You just throw a label at me, so I just imitate somebody who actually was. Oh, my Christ. Christ on my... I don't know what to say to that. Why don't you do... Why don't you what? do a Donald Duck impersonation? But I don't know. Why 
Why do you enjoy scaring me like this? Clyde Cash requests one more thing from Chris. I want you to destroy every possession that you'd love to give up for Julie. That will show you your dedication for Julie. Ah. Material goods is nothing you need to hold on in this moral world. And you have tons of stuff. It is only when you lose everything is when you're free to do anything. You gotta show Julie you goddamn care about her. Sell your shit or destroy your shit. Just do something that makes your room look presentable. I mean, Christ almighty, you still look like a child. I'm young at heart. Everybody has to grow up. Soon after, Christian made a video addressing his recent outing and Clyde's demands. Hello. Y'all may, some of you may have seen the uh, video which, uh, which I've recently uploaded up saying that I was uh, of the wrong orientation. But I, but I, I want to let y'all know that I, I did that to save the life of a trusted gal pal. So yes, as you can tell from my nonverbal clues, I was lying out of my ass. And also, I had to make another we'll another promise after making that after that that I uh, get rid of some of my unnecessary possessions. I want to let want to uh, let him know anyway that I've already started. I, Did he say the word possessions? No, what he said. I want to let want to uh, after that that I uh, get rid of some of my. Unnecessary possessions. Possessions. That's what he said. My bad. I want to let want to uh, let him know anyway that I've already started. I destroyed this. He claims to have filmed himself destroying his vibrator when, in fact, after struggling to snap it in half, he merely disassembles it. Dun dun dun. Good job, Chris. To, that Dickhead. deed is done. I think I have proven myself well enough. I was holding on to my manhood, my straightness, by having Optimus Prime on my lap, and my Sailor Moon poster behind me that I look at every night to help keep me straight. I was born to straight, help. and I will never be changed that way. Your Sailor Moon poster helps keep you straight. Thank you. On February 7th, Chris, Clyde, and Julie took part in another short mumble chat. His life is miserable. Look at it, Julie. Tell me, what have you done of merit today? What have you done today? Go, go through your daily routine. I made contact with Julie and expressed my love for her a little bit more. Yes, so uh, something productive. Clyde grills him about his spending habits, his reluctance to find a job, and the state of the economy at the moment. All right, my mother wants me to go out and get her some bread, some orange juice, and a, and a tuna fish, and a tuna sub from Sheets. It's also late for that. Sheets is open 24 hours. That's nice. Okay, I can't believe you still uh, Julie, I'll that. talk to you later on the PlayStation Network. Goodbye. All right, Clyde. are you going to come back to Momo? Hmm, that's something for me to think about. I'll see you later, Julie. All Bye, right. Clyde. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, could have been better. Could have been awfully better. That's all I can really say. I'm disappointed. And before you all unmute yourself... Cogs, I'm sorry. I was still set to stereo mix instead of my microphone. Because I was recording Chris. Yeah, I better stop recording now. Conditions are still extremely dangerous. Winds are shifting. Some towns are coming under ember attack. Emergency services have blocked some... On February 7th, raging bushfires began to spread across the Australian state of Victoria, eventually killing nearly 200 people. Even though she was known to be living in the state of South Australia, Chris believed that Sarah may have been lost to the fire. Another episode down. Thank you guys again for taking that ride with me. If you guys are still here, uh, if this was your first time checking out the channel, thank you. I really do appreciate it. If you're one of my OGs, you guys already know how I feel about each and every single one of you. You know how much I love and appreciate you guys. 
you can tell when sometimes I get a little stale, I kind of, uh, so maybe we'll put like a sleep counter in these videos. See so if you guys can catch how many times I fall asleep each video. Anyways, thank you guys again for taking this ride with me. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.